We are the first inner city school um, in the UK, uh, possibly even in Europe, to have a boat which we're going to use to enter competitive races. Um, and you know, our aim is to win. A vast armada of yachts, over 350, provided a magnificent spectacle as they set off on the 60 mile Round the Island race. The Round the Island race is one of the most traditional races in the sailing calendar. We did it so that we could um, enter a big sailing race. This is the best of Britain racing and uh, it's a monumental race. When we turned up and we saw the amount of the amount of boats that was there, very intimidating. I think I was feeling a bit excited, but yet worried at the same time. And I was thinking, how are we going to do this? And I said this a million times before the race. I was scared we was going to crash. Currently, I just looked just now. We had 51 knots in the Needles Channel because a big squall came through. So how fast is that? That's fast. That's you wouldn't want to be out there. That's getting onto gale force winds. The other boats were having to be taken out. Some of the boats just um, turned back. Some of the boats were sinking. I was just like, I pray this doesn't happen to us. I hope. I pray we finish. Right, so who have you found so far? Monto. Right, you'll be on his way, won't you? It's right. Jordan. <laughs> Good morning, Jordan. No Tell answer from Derek. Derek's late for everything. Derek is late for Derek is late for school. Derek's late for trips. Before sailing, I used to dance, urban dancing, like popping, locking, and all that. I got into football, I was in like year seven and I kind of like got tired of football. Like uh, after that, I did like athletics. Year eight and I was kind of into basketball, but yeah. And then after basketball, I kind of got into sailing. How did your friends react when you got into sailing? They were really shocked. They didn't really know like, how can you do sailing like that? They, they see that as like a posh sport, like horse riding or something like that. They don't cope up with the early mornings at all, so, uh... Here's Junior. He's just arrived. Here's Montel. Morning, Junior. Oh, that? Is that your bag? That's it. My bag is in the thing. <laughs> Morning. My name is Junior. I'm from... I live in Tottenham. And my family are from Ghana. It was a huge jump because from football, everyone plays football, whereas sailing is more for um, rich people. No wonder the sea and sail beckon to you. It is no longer the preserve of kings, dukes, and millionaires. I watched some videos, and it's normally people with posh hats smoking cigars. I grew up in Wirral, near Liverpool. I remember that some of the greatest experience I had was when I was sailing with my dad. I got a huge amount out of the whole experience, and I thought, can I transfer this to a state school? Derek, are you at home? Right, we're all sitting in the car park waiting to go. We have to be sailing at 11, right? And, and I said to be here for 7 o'clock. Right, I would suggest that you get into a taxi and come to school. He's just woken up. When I joined Greg City Academy, they didn't have any equipment whatsoever to try and run outdoor education. It all had to be bought, and I bought the lot, minibuses, trailers, mountain bikes. We sold the house that we had, partly to help with the funding of outdoor education. So at the moment we, where we live here, which is the caretaker's house, very close to the school. Most of them come from top. They bring with them very little because they have very little. Um, most of them all have never been on a family holiday. How much is that? Um, most of them all have never been outside the M25, if the truth be known. Derek, what time do you call this? Let's stick your stuff in the back. Yeah. Thanks.
show up out the door, want me there, because they had a key popped it up on the real side and I got them again. Well, before the sailing, I was a misbehaved student. I was like, you can call the class clown. He is the student who struggles most at school. Uh, when Derek was in year 10 last year, his attendance was about 40%. Push it away! Away! On dinghies, I'm the cell trimmer. OK, guys, the gym's on the wrong side! At first, like, I kept on falling in the water. Like, I kept on capsizing the little dinghies. You tapped on the wrong side, Jesus like Christ! It. But the more times I, like, I dropped in the water, I, I started getting warm and I was like, this is actually fun. He's found an activity which he's extremely good at and which actually takes advantage of his, his personal qualities. How you doing there, Junior? He's extremely good with the morale of the team. He's very good with the banter between the boys, which for um, school is not ideal, but for sailing is vital. <laughs> we used to capsize that like, all the time. Oh no, just me and Nicholas were seasick. Yeah, and Shabazz was always there. Every single time <laughs> I've been sick, Shabazz has been there to save it. My name is Shabazz Patterson, and I'm the Sail Trimmer. I'm also vice captain of the sailing crew. My role on the boat is the running back stays, which are the two pieces of rope that are connected to the back, and it goes all the way to the mast. So my job is to stop it from pumping backwards or forward because if it pumps backwards and forward, the mask could potentially go down. It would mean the boat would be shattered, destroyed, and crushed. Submarine, top boat, guys, guys! At first, I thought it was a big challenge because I'd never been on a small boat and I only got 10 meters in swimming. They ask us a lot of questions, like try to catch us out, but we answer them properly and then they're like, oh, so you actually really do so well. My name's Montel Jordan. I am the helmsman and also the captain of the team. I just like it, to be honest, because we're basically showing that we're different and like, we're basically coming after you. When did you first um, hear about the sailing? What did you think? I could not believe it. I could not believe Greg City is doing sailing. And on top of that, got their own boat. <laughs> Amazing. The world is not equal. And I think society is not equal at all. And people don't have the same opportunities. Centre it, centre it, centre it, centre it. I think it. teachers should do what they can do to try and make the world more equal. Wow. I'll take this one over, Derek, if you take that one. Force all of this sailing. Like, everyone used to see Mr Holt as a scary figure in school, like, like everyone here, did no. you? Yes, you did. He was my geography teacher. So before he, that, before yeah. that, like in year seven and year eight, so he, Yeah, he was the scariest yeah, teacher in the school. Sees him as a scary... When, when, <laughs> when he takes one foot in the playground, then everyone just... Everyone yeah. stops and looks at him. Wait, 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 stop. We see he's a really open. different wait. person yeah. on the box. He shows his emotions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't even knew he had. He had. Yeah. Really? It's a new John. Junior, lose the football for a second. You can let your grand tour. He here. is. I mean, the adjectives begin, I suspect, with bonkers. Um, he's a driven. He's a fantastic head of seat, and that's what we pay him to do, as it were. The rest is extra, and he is driven to to make it work. We went onto eBay and discovered that you can buy a laser for very little money if it's second hand. You know, for five hundred and fifty pounds, you can get yourself a. Very good, you know, solid, sturdy, you know, training dinghy. I, th I thought that might be it. Foolish youth. Um, because, again, within a month or two, he'd come through the door and said, we need a bigger boat. I was actually trying to buy a much bigger boat called Rothmans originally, a big boat which, uh, which Laurie Smith was the skipper of. And that was where the whole project started. And I came home and I said to Vanessa, in fact, actually, Vanessa was out because <laughs> but his original idea was we would buy the boat and live on it, take a mortgage out. I told him I would leave him. So I didn't do that. <laughs> My logic was that we would then own it and it, you know, we'd slowly pay it off and it would then be an investment of ours. Um, but the problem is, is that we want to do it properly. So the idea of, of, rent, of, of taking out a mortgage on a racing yacht, you know, not, uh, not you know, 
yachts that people live on, boats that people live on are, are much more luxurious. Uh, yeah, I couldn't hang my clothes up on there, could I? Well, exactly. And so Where something the like... Go? So something like... Uh, so you binned that idea? I didn't bin the idea. What <laughs> happened then was, I mean, I realised I couldn't buy this boat. I couldn't buy Laurie Smith's old boat. So I, I started to look for something which was affordable and I found Scaramouche. We found a, a boat languishing um, on the east coast somewhere, um, which he said, this is a real bargain. We, we need to go and have a look at this. And we saw a couple of pictures, and it looked like a bargain for a very good reason. And it had been out of the water for three or four years, as far as I could see, and was growing mould nicely. And I sent him with a senior member of staff to say, whatever you do, don't buy it. You're not allowed to spend anything. Just have a look. These boys came with me to have a look. We fell in love with this uh, boat um, and bought it uh, on a credit card. Whose? Uh, mine. And of course, he came through the door saying, we put down a deposit. At which point, yeah. I mean, he, he, he has a vision and he just goes for it. Did we mention that we think he's on the spectrum? Before, there was a lot of problems with it. Like, the underneath of the boat had been corroded away, and now it's been fixed. How does it look? Yeah, it looks yeah. good. It looks fresh. Yeah. fresh. Fresh. So we are the first inner city school um, in the UK, uh, possibly even in Europe, to have a boat which we're going to use to enter competitive races. Um, and, you know, our aim is to win. Oh, you've got a storm cell. Oh, I've got, I've got a full, uh, full suite of sails here. This boat has had a, in total, has had a £31,000 refit, OK? All those talks you did, um, in the end, raised £42,100. This thing here, which is the anchor, it's called the windlass, this is new now. We tried to enter the Arrow Trophy race, but we were declined because we were not a fee public paying school. Fee public, yeah, <laughs> fee fee public, public school. school. Yeah. We thought that uh, it was a barrier, but it was a barrier we overcame. We entered uh, uh, Astor Small Six Race last year in October. Which we won. Flying colours. Flying colours. Um, before we were about to do the race, the day before, Mr Holt was like, you're not going to win this. Yeah, yeah, he's pulling us down. Yeah, he's yeah. pulling us down. He said, we're here to at least compete. If and you come top five, then He well didn't done. even say top no, five, he said he top said, 15. Yeah, everyone had to say top 15. So top we 15. said, say nothing, so we're going to show you. The boats that were there were newer than ours, they were bigger than ours. Throughout the whole race, we went from 30th place and then to second place. And then 10 minutes from the end of the race, we saw the first place boat and then we all started chanting, come on, Skyrimish, come on, Skyrimish. And then we overtook the first place boat. There was a speed boat that came through with the like, sailing committee and they said, well done, I think you've won. A vast armada of yachts, over 350, provided a magnificent spectacle as they set off on the 60 mile round the island race. The Round the Island race is one of the most traditional races in the sailing calendar. It's a race which is mass participation, it's world renowned. So when we decided to do it, we did it so that we could um, enter a big sailing race in which we would be recognised as being a serious uh, competitive um, outfit. But the Round the Island race, you have Ben Ainsley. The Olympic champion, yeah, who's going to be in that race. But maybe his, his boat might crash, <laughs> so he might win. If he carry on towards the Isle of Wight... When Sir said, oh, the sailing boat will be life-changing, I just thought, OK. I thought yeah. he was off his melon. <laughs> but then I noticed it actually is life-changing. This is the Barra of Haringey and basically we're in Tottenham, but the south side of Tottenham. Going down that way would be Seven Sisters side. Right here we've got Tiverton and that going there is Manor House. Goodwill Farm is more down this way. 
What's it like where you live? Peaceful when it needs to be. Is wonderful because you get to see everything that happens without actually going downstairs. We are seven at the moment, so we are crowded here. It's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> in this house. Junior has a circle cell. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, especially I said when he is in pain, I just watch him the way he go through is make me feel bad, something like that. You yes. know? And before he was playing football, but now he stopped football. Yeah, going to sailing. Sometimes, like, my body will stop functioning, which meant, and I didn't, at the time, I didn't know what was happening. So then, like, we went to GP, and then the GP referred us to a hospital, and then from there, the hospital told me. Junior's a very skillful young man at sailing, and he is a very important part of our team. His problem is, is that cold weather in particular sets off you know, the symptoms that he has of, of sickle cell. Yeah, he got wet from. We'll, we'll be able to compensate to an extent with, you know, more specialist clothing for him. We're fundraising for it. It's one of the last things on our list, the last items on our list that we need to, to get. I live with my mum, my brother, and my little sister, and my older sister. Uh, I come from Uganda, East Africa. When I came here, I wanted to better my kids. I thought about it and I said, at least my kids will have a better life. I grew up in Uganda. And what was it like then, growing up there? In Uganda, yeah. it's totally different. What way? I grew up in a boarding school. I attended boarding school. Boarding school, Derek? Fancy that? Yeah, boarding school. Um, Derek, I mean, he didn't um, my mum and my dad are both from Uganda. I would like to go, but I wouldn't like to go with my dad because whenever my dad tells me he's going to take me, I'm always scared that he's going to leave me there. <laughs> he only threatens to take me when he hears that I've been naughty. When the kids growing up here is a bit tricky if they mix up with bad groups, so you have to be always watching them. Because we live in Tottenham, Tottenham is, and you know, like they can be easily join gangs or whatever. You know, like you can be. I want him, you know, to get do better, do well, and go to university. And I'm not someone that wants to keep the kids close. I want them to learn, so I let them free. My mom's very positive to the whole sailing thing. Um, my dad, he's here and there. Sometimes he can be all right with it, and then sometimes he just has loads of problems. Like, he would often want me to come and work at his shop and, like, help him around the shop, but I can't really do that because I'm too busy with sailing. Are you worried about him when he's on the water like that? Yeah, because for me, I don't want water. <laughs> In my young age, I never wanted to go even swimming. Really? Yeah, so I worry about water. What did you think when he told you he was going to do sailing? Um, I said, OK. But to be honest, I didn't know he was doing that in the sea. And I said, wow, is it a sea? <laughs> what did you think they were doing then? <laughs> I thought maybe it's a small river or something like that. Anyway, there's nothing I can do. What I have to do is I have to support him. And when they are going, I have to pray for them. <laughs> to go, yes, to God protecting them, come back home safely. Yeah, what I have to do. Breathing may barely continue, if at all. Death might not occur, however, until much later. One, two, three, go. What's happening now? Doing a fire safety drill. Yeah. Crucial part of the sea survival, so it's the practical part side of it. Oh yeah, I'm confident. I know I have to swim. Oh, 
Around the Island race is a race around the Isle of Wight. There'll be lots of tide pushing you. It's known as being a really good race, but one which is also quite challenging. Make sure you stay in the deep here. Cut as close as you possibly can here with the needles. Hi there, I remember you. Yeah. I remember most of you, I think. First race is when? Next week. Next week. Okay, let's start! This is the deep water I was telling you about. So when you're going out in the race, you don't want to be, you don't want to go right of that point. You want to stay in this channel. So that's the deep water. He's widely regarded as one of the most naturally gifted well. sailors that there's ever been. That's the best time. When I wrote this, it, it was like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to be yeah, happily hear the tour. There's this much wind, and the tide's going that way. You're going to get like four knots more wind. The 10 or 12 kids to come on a big boat like this and with no experience is, is very unusual, yeah. Hey Derek, if you're not doing much now, you can get up there as well. There's one thing kind of getting a bunch of kids in small dinghies. It's another thing by <laughs> 40 foot ocean racing boat. John was pretty brave taking it on because it needed an awful lot of work to it. What's really good though is all the sheets are all new and nothing's going to break. Yeah. And we've got the life rafts mounted at the back. They should call those death rafts. Rafts. Why? Because you never want to get in one of those. Oh yeah. No. Don't abandon them unless you. A lot have of to. people get to leave the boat and then think that because it's called the life raft, it's going to save their life. But all they are really is big rubber rings. Mm. So you can always stay on the boat until it literally sinks under you. Leave you. How do you feel thinking about what you've got ahead of you in the summer? Um, I have to put on a brave face and appear as though I am really confident that everything's in hand. Uh, the truth is, is that when I was standing on the deck of the boat on Friday evening, I had many occasions where I think, what the hell have I taken on here? Uh, this is a, on the one hand, there's this, the boat itself is like a very complicated building project to sort out. Yeah. Then I have to sort out the crew then their coursework and their behaviour. So I, f I find it a bit daunting. I have lots of moments of thinking, what have I done? You got this off the internet, innit? Mm. I got that as well. Good luck, Shabazz. I said don't. <laughs> Good luck. The place of all of the boys involved in the sailing isn't automatic. But if anyone was to not show the correct amount of commitment, if they didn't come out after their GCSEs, they've got to come training in to sharpen up. If they have some sort of instance in school which suggests that we can't, we have a doubt about how much we could trust them, then yes, they'd lose their place. I'm not going for you are? I'm not. Okay, well, you can forget about this project then. Last week, Junior's behaviour was not brilliant. I can't go into any details, but it's, uh, he's got challenges to overcome in school. There's about £2,000 worth of clothing sitting in that building for you, OK? After what you did last week, OK, I would suggest you try and build bridges with some of the staff. Do we know where Derek's got to yet? He apparently is on the train. Last week. Friday, I think it was, our last exam. I came to school with no non-uniform and like, I got a blast and so it shouted at me and everything. Derek has continual ups and downs. He didn't turn up to the first aid course last weekend. He needs to do it to be safe. And I said to him, you know, you've, it seems to me that you've blown it. And I think the problem that he has, but so also does Junior and maybe Shabazz to an extent is, that they've got different things pulling them in different directions. You know, they have got, okay, very loving parents pulling them in one direction, they've got teachers trying to pull them in one direction, but there's always a distraction. You yeah, know, I was kind of left thinking, you know, is he actually going to walk away from this now? What's Mr Holt like? Uh, Mr Holt is, uh, he's, he's caring. Yeah. Like, we, like, sometimes, like, we can put him through so much 
always given us like chances. I, I, I don't know how much chances I've been on with. So like, sometimes like I'm really scared. I'm like, oh, like this is serious. I might like get. I'm, I'm in jeopardy of coming off the sailing team. Well, that's In half an hour, you're starting to get yourselves to sleep, yeah? Remember, when I go past and I occasionally come on the deck, I can see through those windows and I can hear. Yeah, that would work, fam. Why not? Because I've got a card for it. messing around. Okay. So who, who put the two down? She buys passion. Like, majority of races, the people that sell the other boats, they're just like, that would be roughly the first time they've known each other. But with us, we've got that chemistry there, so we all, like, we know how to talk to each other, we know how to connect properly. Helps us sell the bot bell. Do you think so too, Junior? Yeah. So good luck. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. What's it like sleeping out here? It's calm because like you can feel the boat moving in it. It's like it rocking you to sleep. It's not quiet at home. There's always like distractions and music or my little sister crying, mum complaining that I didn't do chores here. I could just put my headphones in and go to sleep. All right. Here we are at the luxury staff accommodation. Uh, yeah. This is where I sleep down here. So, all that hard work to be able to sleep on a, uh, a lovely uh, 22 foot, uh, you know, boat like this. Come on, get changed quickly. I'm the press officer for the JP Morgan Asset Management Randy Island race. So I get to choose what I think is going to be the most newsworthy story of the, of the race. And I would say this is definitely one of them. They don't come along that often where you take a bunch of inner city kids and go racing. Um, it's going to be, I think, quite a baptism of fire tomorrow. But it's going to test their skills and courage and determination. You don't really see any children around here. It's mainly just adults, <laughs> older men. This is the best of Britain racing, and uh, it's a monumental race. Mike Slade, owner of Leopard. And you've won this race before, then? Yes, we have a few times. I think we've. I think it's about 17. The only thing I knew about the race is that um, it was sponsored by J.P. Morgan. I knew there was going to be a lot of boats. Like, I thought there was going to be youth boats as well, and there wasn't, so we were the youngest crew. <laughs> Good luck, guys. And the fact that everyone was watching us felt, like, good. If it goes well, you will either get fish and chips uh, or sauce and chips. The minute I have to stare at any of you, it will go down to chips, OK? London Inner City School, the Greg Academy, have been using the yacht Scaramouche. So can I please welcome this, uh, the, to the stage the crew of Scaramouche. Um, well, we're from a school in Harringay, uh, Tottenham, in North London, which is famous for many things, and sailing is not one. Tomorrow's race, we're hoping that, that we don't crash. <laughs> <laughs> we're the Island Sailing Club. Sailing, sailing, sailing. That's what we do. Yeah, I'm the rear Commodore sailing at the Island Sailing Club, so I'm, I'm suppose I'm the place where the butt stops. I think the whole race is a challenge because you know you're in the sailing, you've got all the tides and the. And the shingle banks and everything else and then you get around the back of the island and you're really on your own once you go past the needle you're you're, you're out into the english channel and uh, there's no safe safe haven if you like till you get back the other end so it is a very challenging race Who else do you see? 
the seabed as well. When we saw the amount of the amount of boats that was there, very to the day. In. Have you got the uh, solar packs? New one. I think I was feeling a bit excited, but yet worried at the same time. And I was thinking, how are we going to do this? And I said this a million times before the race, I was scared we was going to crash. When you, when you set off at the beginning of a race, there's always a great atmosphere. Three, two, one. You hear the gun going off and you're sailing alongside other boats. There's a real feeling of, you know, we're in a race and this is great. Keep the main powered up, please. We need to get ahead of this guy. <laughs> at the beginning of the race, everyone was really excited. And like, yeah, let's go, let's do this. And at the start, we only saw the boats that started the race like 30 minutes earlier, and we saw them like right ahead, and it was kind of like side to side to them. And we was really like excited, and we was like, oh, we actually might do well. They paid more than a million pounds for that boat. We're going to overtake them. Look, these guys are putting the railing in the water. Bro. We don't go out if the forecast is going to be a force seven or above. We, we knew that it was going to be a force five or six the evening before, so we were sort of prepared for that. What we didn't expect was that on the south side of the island, it was force seven and it was gusting force eight, which are stronger conditions that we would normally set out in. But it is a race, it is an event, and they don't stop the race for the weather. Before that race, I've never been seasick, never. Not just too much. I saw that like big waves are coming, so this is about to get tough. We started the day with seeing sort of 50 plus knots at the back of the island and some big seas, so we had to stop four of the five of the classes going. Um, since then, we've had a, a multitude of uh, incidents to deal with. From when we heard that a boat had um, collapsed, like, we knew it was going to be rough. At that point of time, we were halfway through the needle, so we couldn't go backwards because we'll still have to go past the big waves. So we had to continue our journey. When the weather conditions worsened, you know, I had a mixture of all sorts of emotions. At no point would I say I'm scared, um, but apprehensive. Try and keep us down, you know, our first priority has got to be the safety of the crew. Um, they are other people's children. No, this is freaking me out. This is freaking me out. And the waves were like rough, like really rough. And because when we're going past the needles, everyone's trying to be as close to the shore as possible. So like there was like over 200 boats around us and we just had to keep tacking and tacking. And Tacking out of the way of different boats. Ready about, guys! Ready about! Release, release, release! Hey, hey, hey! Where's the witch? Where's the witch? Where's the witch? Currently, I just looked just now, we had 51 knots in the Needles Channel because a big squall came through, so... How fast is that? That's fast. That's, you wouldn't want to be out there. Let's get on to gale force winds. There was a time when the waves were really, like, they were still high. I was just like, there's no going back. I was just like, oh, I'm just going to have to stay here. And I made sure that I clipped myself on every time. All right, I want you to keep this when you're home and you're standing up, you feel. I think you feel it more yeah. when you're more on when Hello. when you're on high side. Yeah. Because you're actually steering, standing up. 
Montel does his own main helmsman. Because of the conditions, he ended up being at the helm for a lot longer. But he was at the helm for you know, a good seven hours. And that's a long, long time to be at the, at the wheel. When you have a 10 and a half ton boat being lifted up by a wave and basically dropped onto the next wave, it makes a massive crash. You know, the, you hear the floorboards lifting up and down inside the boat. Everything is shaken up. There's no point screaming. It's just causing the most um, dilemma. If you're screaming it, the whole crew's got to get worried because they've got to think there's got to be a problem. So you just have to keep your cool, basically. Yeah, my heart is definitely pumping. There was me on one side looking after the main cell. Right beside us was uh, Jordan and Junior, and they were taking care of the backstage. At first, it was more about competing, but then it was more about finishing and making sure the boat didn't get destroyed. The other boats were having to be taken out. Some of the boats just um, turned back. Some of the boats were sinking. I was just like, pray this doesn't happen to us. I hope I pray we finish. What I wasn't expecting was for some of the people out there to be racing as hard as they were. You know, they would tack in front of us. My, my own view is, is that the weather conditions had worsened to the extent that I thought there should be a, more of a focus from some capacitors on actually getting around the race and not putting boats in unnecessary danger. Well, I mean, the worst case scenario with a collision is the boat can sink. The force was too much for me to turn it as much as I could. But I couldn't do much anyways, was even if I did turn it, they still could have collided with us. I've been teaching now for well over 30 years and we've become more risk averse, as the Americans would say, for all sorts of reasons which go from the financial to the, frankly, the legal. We've become a bit scared of what if, instead of kind of really looking forward to what if. You know, there's a what if that's negative. What if it doesn't work? What if it all goes horribly wrong? What if the boat doesn't float? What if, what if? No boats in their division have finished yet. But there's also that as astonishing feeling of satisfaction of, I did it. Hello. To be totally honest, at the time, and even now, I'm not actually too bothered about the fact that there was damage to the radar, damage to an outboard motor and that kind of thing, because that's not the important thing in that situation. The important thing is that everybody is safe and everyone's OK. And the next most important thing is that we could continue with the race, which we did. You know, uh, I actually do get... When you see... Um, excuse me. But when you see kids do things... That... Uh, they never thought they could do. And when you know that the reason they're doing it is because you put in place the building blocks and the scaffolding and the support for them to really meet that challenge and take that risk for themselves, it's just wonderful. OK, just a moment. Right, no injuries. When you panic, cause you're just causing more problems, really. Yeah. Because if you're calm in more situations, it just works out most of the time. People were shocked that we actually finished the race because a lot of people were tired. Nice. was coming in here. I'm not behind you there. That's the R and R I helping today. When 
other people came up to us. Because we were so young, they didn't think, like, I don't think they had thought that we could complete it. And we surprised them. And, it was when, and that's when I realised, like, oh. And then that's what men aim to prove people wrong. I feel all right. Yeah. It's good to complete it, though. Is it, is it hard? Yeah, very hard. At one point, I thought I was going to throw up, but I never. That race was a once in a lifetime race. Junior? Yeah. Have we dried out yet? Junior is like a really determined person with all of the sickness that he has and the fact that he still wants to carry on with all of this sailing. It just shows a lot of determination, so I have respect for him. Darren struggled with a bit with the conditions, but then he did everything he was asked to do, which he doesn't always do in school. If you walk on with the box, it's not a good look at all. I think you've just proved that anything is possible. Hello, excuse me. Is there an African to talk to you about our project? Our sailing project? No. And that like, anyone can do it if they set their mind to it. Hello, excuse me. Can Hello, I mate. can right. I introduce you? Like, just tell you a bit about our sailing project. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Because if I can help you with the spinnaker, I definitely will. Right. I'll make sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll speak. Thank What's you. your name, man? Derek. Derek. Yeah. All the best with it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Shiraz. That's how you do it. We all just wanna make our parents proud and. Through all of the hardship that they've been through, like we feel like we owe them something. What's next for me? A sixth form and then university. And probably be an accountant or stockbroker. We need confidence and risking things like we done doing um, during the sailing race. So I think it would help me quite a lot. When you see the project come to a successful end like that, where we finish such a big race and we finish in a very respectable time. One word I think sums up yesterday, tough. Then, you know, we're very pleased and very proud of what they've actually done. What is he now to you? Is he Mr. Holt or John? He's John Holt to me now. I just call him Mr. Holt. I'm not as brave as Junior to be calling him John and get those eyes now, I'm fine. <laughs> no, I just call him Hope. Yeah. Hope. Yeah. yeah. Jonathan. John. 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 Sometimes he's Jonathan. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> His name is John. Jonathan. He's a good bloke. This has been Montour and Krim, and now we're out. Thank you. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. Yeah. Charge that.